Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today I want to talk with you about what you're going to need to start acrylic pouring. It is not as easy as it looks and there are a lot of supplies that you can have or should have and that's really the difference when you get started just buy and get the basics because it's going to add up anyway. My studio is full to the roof. It's going to come anyway so start with uh, what you really need and uh, experimenting because it can be also pricey with the material you need and go from there. Okay, I'm going to introduce you to, to the materials now. I cannot short cut this video short like I normally like to do. Yeah, because it's step by step. Some of the real knowledge to understand what's going on, why I have other videos, please take the time to get that knowledge it will spare you a lot of disappointment eventually and you will be able to make up your own mind about things you see or read or hear if they're true or beneficial or not so let's get going so obviously you need acrylic paint um, there's many different types of acrylic paint in the shop uh, i advise for beginners really start with a craft paint because you need a lot and at the beginning it perhaps doesn't l work like you want it to be and you really waste a lot of material. Later when you're more secure you can go more into the standard or experience or even fluid acrylics. Start with a nice craft paint and you're good to go. Then you see or read everywhere that you need cups, plastic cups like this because you would mix you would mix your paint in it and you also use them for other purposes and yes that's true they're cheap and you need some containers to mix but if you have some stuff like that or some stuff like that at home that's also fine you don't need necessarily to buy plastic cups it's also more beneficial to the environment if you use stuff you have or that you can even wash out or clean out also very practical are things with lid because most of the time you have rest paint and you're gonna keep that or want to keep that and you can store paint really long if it is properly uh, sealed and everything. Also you can use uh, paper cups it's never going to be in there really long so this is also something to consider for the environment. Like I said there are little ones and bigger ones try to find something with lid it really helps. If we talk about clean out, there's like half puff, uh, hard plastic or even silicone cups where most of the paint will come out and that again you can clean it. In general on the topic of cleaning, it shouldn't go into your sink. Uh, you can put rest leftover paint for example into cat litter and put it into the garbage or you can at least clean the cups or the surfaces out with paper that you then throw away. Next, of course, the surfaces that you can use. Uh, there are little wood thingies, big ones, small ones, tiles is very good because you could even wash them off immediately if you don't like it. And of course, canvases. There is much more you can very nice pour on uh, vinyl records and make clocks out of it. So there is uh, not almost no limit. So you can see this is for example a bigger wood panel. Now with acrylic pouring uh, like you know it is a lot of paint that floats over the surface so you don't want your uh, canvas or whatever is flat on your surface because it will get stuck to the paint. Uh, so you want to have it lifted a bit from the table and that's again where most of the people are going to use cups under it to have it from the table. And you can, no problem at all. But you can also say, I just use one something I make up or something like this. For example, this this oven grill thingies. You can put it on, up on, on that and it's also like a centimeter or two from the table. So also here, yeah, think about what makes sense to you. I personally enjoy really to use push pins under my canvases. I can hammer them in. Uh, of course, for everything, one of the most important things is that it's leveled. Otherwise, overnight your paint's going to run off. But that's very practical. So now you see already what happens with the surface. I left this on, off, on, because you can immediately see it. 
the paint's going to run down. Uh, now, perhaps you don't have a big table like I have, then you could use an oven tray or the stuff that goes under a washing machine or a cat litter tray or whatever, something that catches your paint. Personally, I really, really love this. I have a table. I only put like a pre-tape masking film on it and I can then even choose to take the acrylic paint off. You can do a lot of things with that or I just rip it off, throw it away and I'm good to go for the next time. Okay, so you have your surface, you have it leveled, you have it raised from the platform, you have paint. Now we come to the topic of pouring medium. Do you need a pouring medium? Uh, there, yeah, you need it. Um, of course, there are lots of people, eventually you do it with water only. And if you want to just really, really say, okay, I'm going to try it now and I want to experiment first, do it with water. But then you might get in trouble later to find the right way again when you use pouring medium. What pouring medium needs to do is keep your pigment to get connection together. That's all. There is no magic recipe. There is no magic with it only works with that and in this ratio and that ratio. It's just not. It has other reasons like the main reason is that you get the right consistency. But okay, what pouring mediums are there? There are like professionals, Vallejo, Liquitex are the most common ones. Rather expensive, but specific, specifically made for it. Then you have glue. Uh, in America it's most like Elmer's glue all. And in uh, Europe I would advise bookbinder's glue. Because you want something that is archival. At least that's the best. If you say I only want it for deco or for friends or whatever. Use normal glue. Doesn't matter. It's just the archival version of it. Then you of course have Floetrol. Floetrol, uh, a lot of people say they get better cells with Floetrol. But it's not necessarily that totally the Floetrol does it. It's because, like I said, the pigment connection needs to stay together and glue is a binder. Fluotrol is a conditioner with binders, so Fluotrol makes it smoother and more flowy and all that, and that's why people think it's the Fluotrol necessary. And of course it is the Fluotrol, but it's not mandatory to get good cells. If you use glue or another professional pouring medium and you have the right consistency, you will exactly get perfect, perfect cells. So that's on the pouring medium. Again, I really advise you to look at the knowledge is powers and basic videos because I explain all about pouring medium, understand paint and what the background is behind all this and why it does work. So if you go for water and like I said, you want to store it, please cook it or distilled water because you don't want any stuff from the tap in your paint. Yeah, if you store it for weeks. Now to come to the cells, um, you don't need cells. If you don't like them, you can do a lot of other things with acrylic pouring, but if you want them, you would as a work with density, but that's a very difficult topic, or you would use silicone. And you can get silicone pure, you can get it in a spray bottle from the hardware store, and then you can get dimethicone, which is a thicker version of silicone. And then you get often the advice, you need a hair serum. Uh, like this. This is a hair serum, but the only thing why this is the case, it's not the hair serum or the perfume or the coconuts in it. It's because the second one of the first ingredients is dimethicone. And that's exactly what you can also buy pure. So you can also use that because it's eventually much cheaper or easier to get. If you look at home in your in your kit in your bathroom cupboard and you find something like this, hair oil, hair serum with dimethicone, you're good to go. But that's the only reason. It's all oils. Thicker, thinner, different ones. That's all. Oil will raise to the top. That knowledge is in the other video. Now, uh, to get more cells out, you either hear about torches or heat guns or hair dryers. I use a torch. Uh, I'm also thinking that a heat gun is fine. I'm not a fan of the hair dryer because it will dry your paint. And I do believe that can give you problems with drying. 
Why do you need the torch? It pulls up the silicone that is left under the underlaying layers to the top and you get even more cells. But of course also with this some cells will come up because some of the silicone will already wraith through the paint layers. It's just one of the things where you need to decide for yourself. I really like it, so make, you can make up your own mind on that. Then uh, one of the all so very important things, always wear gloves. Uh, yeah, not necessarily saying that any of this is really toxic, but you have your hand in it most of the time, so uh, be safe with that. So that's really it for the beginning and uh, like I said at the end you're probably gonna have a lot of more things because you're gonna start using more techniques and all then you're eventually gonna get rubbing alcohol because it gives a different effect similar to cells. You might get pellet knives and oh yeah before you forget it you need of course something to steer the paint and most of the people uh, use popsicle sticks. but. It, whatever you ha have. If you have knives at home that you don't use anymore or plastic uh, this stuff then you can also as long as you can steer it there is no given you need this or that. You need something to steer it. And then these are also things I really like again a container a, um, for storing paint but it's also really nice to have a nozzle like that. So I think that's it. I hope you like it. Get going. Only get this stuff first. You will get more anyway. You also don't buy things that are interchargeable. So you don't need, for example, silicone and hair uh, serum. You don't need Floetrol and glue, even if there are people uh, that do mix them. And it's also very fine to mix them. But at the beginning, don't spend all this money for stuff that you can get later when you're a bit more experienced. So if you like this, give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Have a look at the playlists for more real basic knowledge. There's also showing in total seven of the basic techniques. Um, and I hope to see you back soon.